We'll call our meeting of agencies and affairs to order. First up, looking for approval of the agenda. So moved. Motion and support. Any changes or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Public comment. Uh, step up to the mic and you have five minutes. Give us your name, please, if you have any comments. Public. Hearing none. Moving on to the minutes of the February 10th, 2014 Agencies and Affairs meeting. Motion and support. Any changes needed? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Moving on to appointments. We have a large number of appointments this morning. First up is the Ag Preservation Board. We still have no current member nor applicants. I'm assuming we'll continue to advertise that. And if commissioners can reach out to anybody they think would be a good member or a member, that would be a good thing. Mr. Chair, I would ask who the current member is. Greg Sanford. Greg Sanford? Okay. I'm sorry, who did you say, Dave? Greg Sanford. Okay. Maybe our administrator or deputy administrator can reach out to him and also make the change to reflect that he's a current member. Uh, Brownfield Redevelopment Authority, the first, we have three spots to fill. The first is the township supervisor rep. The current member is Jim Dunn, and Jim Dunn is the applicant for that. Motion and support. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. City Council Rep Dan Greer is the current member, also the applicant. Motion and support for Dan Greer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Consumers Energy Rep Natalie Stopiak is the current member, and the applicant is Brad Runkel. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Those three names will be forwarded to the full board. Uh, Department on Aging, Judy, Julie, did you want to talk about this? I did. Um, we appreciate all the in while we appreciate all the individuals that repeatedly apply. I would just like to I would like confirmation that of the seven that. Um, our current members that all seven want to continue on as there are only two applications that were completed and in our packet. As we have an additional person that is asking to come on board, I do not want to take an individual that wants to remain on that's a qualified candidate and replace them and or the other way if the, the new person applying is a qualified candidate and someone simply doesn't want um, to remain on the board. So I, I personally don't feel comfortable taking somebody off that board without confirmation that they really want to be on that board or basically I just need more uh, information please. Okay. Also I recall if we do have a problem with uh, let's say there are seven applicants that want to be on this board and we have or if there are eight applicants and we have seven openings I recall many conversations going back to what is their attendance I think we need to be consistent with this if we're asking for this in other boards and committees then this might be a, a, a determining factor um, so that has come up many times in conversation as well okay I also had a concern about the new term expiring it looked like they all expire December 2015 our board chair pointed out there's about 18 people that serve on that, so he believes that's all accurate. Adam, did you have some input on uh, the applicants? And I, I think it's Patricia Spink and Dennis Peck whose applications we have with the board packet. I believe we had confirmation from uh, Marcy Wandell that they all wanted to serve again. However, if you'd rather wait till we have applications from them, because uh, I understand the predicament you're in, then we, we can push it back a month. That'd be okay. I personally think it'd be a good idea. I think it's always best to have an application that way. There's no question about somebody applying. I think two months ago we held up an appointment. Julie, you had somebody that had verbally suggested they would be willing to serve on a committee, but we had no application and we waited on it. Um, and it also would give us a chance to see the attendance records because we do have eight people for seven spots. 
So if the committee is willing, I think we can hold this over till next month would be a good idea. Does that uh, motion? Yeah, well, one more question. Does that disrupt anything, do we think, for Department on Aging, Adam, or not? And then I'll give. Well, the, the policy is that they continue serving until, until uh, somebody is reappointed okay. or they withdraw themselves. Carl, did you have a question down here? Yeah, just a comment on Patricia Spink. Uh, she's been in Florida and will be in Florida, but um, when she did leave, uh, she indicated that she certainly wanted to continue on. So just to let you know that. Yeah, she's one of them that we do have an application. So, Dave, yes, we are looking for a motion to hold it over. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Moving on to the EDC, we have Martin Griffin is the current member. The applicant is Andrew Fraunfelker. Motion and support. Any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Uh, FEMA, it's vacant. There appears to be no applicants. Hopefully we can get some. That would be a good seat to have filled, I think. Uh, Lifeways, we have uh, two commissioner, one commissioner appointment, one consumer. The commissioner is Carl Rice. He's also the applicant. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Uh, one consumer, and it's Jim Shotwell, Sr. So moved. Support. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. South Central Michigan Works, it's vacant. Uh, there is no applicant. JTA. Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. I believe a correction needs to be made on South Central Michigan work. We do have three commissioners currently serving. Um, uh, Commissioner Placek, Commissioner Leitner, and myself all serve. Two of us, uh, I believe there are three openings, and then there's an alternate position also. I don't, if I recall from a year ago, and please bear with me, um, we did not fill the alternate, but the three of us are on board. Um, do you think it's two? No. no. Oh, okay. I was just—I was just going to say that the commissioners would just carry forward. They don't. If we have to make an appointment to this, and everybody still wants to serve and is willing to be there for one more month, we can just take care of this one next month since it's all commission. That's what we'll do. Okay. Okay. JTA. One public member, Phil Moylanen, is the current member and the applicant. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Veterans Affairs, uh, first position is Robert Sales, the current member and the applicant. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Vietnam Vet, Joe Peak is the current member and applicant. So Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Try and slow down, Amanda. Uh, item C on the agenda, the parks purchase agreement between the County of Jackson and JPS for the inner city trail connector. Scott, did you want to address this? Good morning, Chair and Commissioners. Um, we have the opportunity uh, to make final connection between the inner city trail and Sparks Parks. And these two pieces of property have come up as an opportunity uh, through an agreement between the Jackson Public Schools and Jackson County. Um, this also too will align itself with the hopefully future purpose purchase of the Flannery property which is off of Kibbe Road uh, that we have been in discussion with. Um, and looking forward, um, we're recommending that the Affairs and uh, Agency Affairs Committee uh, and Jackson County Commission has approved the purchase agreement between the Jackson County and the Jackson uh, Public Schools for the two properties, uh, parcels 3-316.1000 uh, and 000-13-16-201-001-2001. Zero zero for $40,000 and associated closing costs as stipulated in the purchase agreement. 
Scott, just two quick points. One, it's two parcels, obviously. We only need one, but they don't want to sell just one individually, correct? That is correct, sir. So we would just use that uh, in the future, potentially, the second yes, lot. Yes, sir. And then the funding itself comes from the Falling Waters Trail Fund? That is correct. Okay. Looking for a motion? Or any other questions of Scott? Motion and support. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you, Scott. Parks, Cascades, renovation request. Uh, once again, uh, in the study session, we talked about the opportunity to move forward with the Cascades renovation project. Um, it obviously, in the, the past history, has been such that we uh, had Spicer Group come in and give us an inventory of the needs of the renovation. Uh, then an ad hoc committee was created to kind of uh, go through the process of the best way to do that. Um, what I'm asking for today, or we're asking for today, is to, an engine, uh, to engage an engineering firm uh, to begin the demolition and site restoration drawings for phase one of the Cascades renovation project, uh, and then to seek non-county funding sources to cover the remaining phase one cost. But more importantly, and very importantly, is to begin the process to identify a champion. And that champion would be somebody that would lead uh, the opportunities for funding uh, and um, uh, both uh, non-county non funding, whether it be through corporations or other sources, but this champion needs to be someone that knows the public, knows the process, and uh, can see the process all the way through to completion for the entire renovation, which we're looking at right now at nine and a half million dollars through the process. So what I'm asking for, or we're asking for, is uh, recommend the Agency Affairs Committee to authorize the Parks Department to engage the engineering firm to begin the demolition and site restoration drawings for Phase 1, and also to seek non-county funding sources to cover the remaining Phase 1 cost, and to allow us, the Park Board, to identify a champion to see the Cascades renovation project all the way through. And obviously this is contingent upon the Personnel and Finance Committee and the Board Appropriations to uh, seek additional seed money from the County General Fund. Scott, is it accurate that there's 50000 left from the original allocation and that's what would be used for this engineering study? That is correct, okay. sir. Okay. Commissioners, any questions of Scott? Julie. Scott, in mentioning this champion, one of the last comments you just made, and just for public record so we have it, you had mentioned to have the Parks Board look into the champion. Um, I would just ask our, uh, our board chair, uh, Commissioner Shotwell, um, for his response or reaction to that as well, because as board chair, I understand your responsibility and um, Im the importance of your um, thoughts through this process. Uh, a little history. Um, when the Cascades started this project probably eight years ago, and we involved the community, each time that something's needed to be done, this Board of Commissioners has stepped up and paid the bill. I really give this board credit for the foresight and thoughtfulness in the process. Uh, we paid for the, the original strategic plan. We paid for the tactical plan of the Cascades. And now we're stepping up to do this part here. I believe that a partnership through the Cascades Parks Board or the Jackson County Parks Board and this board is appropriate and responsible. And I will be speaking with the Parks Chairman about uh, the best path forward. And he and I have a couple of people in mind we'd like to propose to both organizations uh, as, a, as a possible champion. Thank you, Julie. And, and I think it merits mentioning that uh, very obviously the Parks Board and this board and the Ad Hoc Committee uh, have worked very closely together to, to see this through. So. It's exciting. Yeah. The fifty thousand dollars is coming from which fund? Adam or Mike could give you the exact fund, but it's from the original allocation of a hundred thousand dollars we made for the uh, engineering study that was done by what I think Spicer Group. That's correct. This would be the remaining that we allocated uh, over a year ago. I think a year and a half ago. All right. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? If not, we'd be looking for a motion. I move that we move these requests to the full board. Support. Motion and support. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. 
fair master planning request? Uh, yes. yes. As discussed in the study session, over the past three years, the uh, Fair Board has been in lengthy, lengthy discussion as it relates to an opportunity to take the fairgrounds to a different level, and that requires us to consider a, a master planning process. Um, so what we are asking for is an opportunity to move forward with that, and we, along with myself and Denise, are recommending that the... Um, the agency affairs allow us to appropriate funds for the fair board to engage in a master planning process for the fairgrounds. It also, too, aligns very cleanly with the upcoming recre joint recreation plan that we're working with the city on to be able to submit to the state at the end of this year. So both are hand in hand in the process. Denise, any comments? Nope, you covered it. Thank you. So we're looking for $50,000 for that opportunity, up to, excuse me, $50,000 for that opportunity. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioners, any motions? Okay. Motion and support. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried, and this goes to the full board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, fair semi annual report. Denise. Hi, good morning. Good morning, morning Chair. Where we went. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, I have a PowerPoint, I think. Don't I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need my zip drive or is it already there? Oh. I'm already trying to dig it out of here. I didn't know that. I apologize. Okay. Thank I'm always trying to match Kent. You know, he always comes with all the bells and whistles, so. Sorry. Um, well, good morning. And, you know, we're all happy because the weather's a little nicer today. And I'm a little tired from our big event on Saturday. Okay, great things are happening in 2014 for the fairgrounds. But we'll start off kind of a carryover from uh, 2013. You know, we open storage in uh, October of every year, and we finish that on the 31st of this month. And our storage revenue, uh, we have really packed in everybody we possibly can so we uh, feel really good about the fact that once again uh, we've increased storage but we our biggest increase was uh, for this certain storage season so we increased it by 18 percent for the revenue that we've received from that um, uh, folks are a little nervous because of the snow still out there but our out date is the uh, 31st of March so we've already had a few calls and I assured the, um, the facilities department that at least the grandstand will be emptied be to uh, move forward on the work that's planned there winter beer fest uh, those of you who have actual um, uh, knowledge of it because you were there and participated and helped thank you so very much we had a great turnout of uh, volunteers it takes about 125 people to put this on we had a few fall off but had a few um, fall in so really I think our round number was about 127 and it was an absolutely phenomenal uh, event uh, our sponsorships for this event have grown. Experience Jackson stepped up to the plate this year, and I think that uh, they, uh, I'm going to approach them again next year, and I think they had a lot of positive reaction. I do know that the rooms I put on hold for this event, for the hotel rooms, were all completely gone before the uh, weekend previous. So if uh, that hotel was filled, I know other hotels were able to put people in beds. Here's pictures. Now, of course, I wasn't, I brought my little doohickey with me to plug in, but the pictures are from last year, but mind you, they're no different from this year, just as many people. So if you recognize a face there. Okay.
Okay, we have some great things moving up. Um, uh, March 25th is our Project Red Day. That's Rural Education Days. That's when we're going to have probably up to 1,200 third graders on the grounds learning about agriculture, and that's a fun event. We are hoping that we can get the snow piles out of the way in front of some of the barns that they're going to be utilizing. Uh, but we expect to have, um, again, a big turnout for that, and it's a lot of fun. And that, that organization, which Commissioner Leshka uh, is involved in, too, that takes a lot of volunteer help to get that program going. The upcoming events, I'll be very quick. Uh, I don't know if you want me to read this, but the Gem and Mineral Show, which is this weekend, uh, the Home Builders following that, but we have everything from blood drives, the Antique Fire uh, Apparatus Show. This year new is uh, AKC Kennel Dog Show that is going to be a three-day weekend event. Uh, we have signed a five-year commitment with them to have this event. It's the first time it's been in Jackson uh, Fairgrounds, so we're really excited about that. Then our community flower and plant sale, which is a, a, a warm fuzzy for the chairman. He's very involved in that. But we have circuses, flea markets, the kids' fest, uh, cars car sales, craft shows, a lot of private rentals. We know we do a lot of uh, weddings at the American One and at the Blackstone Activity Park building. The Teen Idol, Death Row Derby Bouts. The Derby Girls are back. New name, new company. Uh, they've got three public bouts that they'll be doing this year. Uh, a group of really nice girls, and uh, they practice two days a week in our American One Event Center. And then, of course, we round out the uh, year with a Nightlight's Christmas drive through but we are in the midst since October getting ready for fair. We did just make our first announcement, which was uh, our country concert, Alabama, which we are very, very happy with the way ticket sales are going. We came right out of the gate shouting, so we're, we're excited to have that uh, coming to the fair on Sunday night, August 3rd. Uh, we will again also be having that we've committed to our tractor pulls, our rodeo, a monster truck show, the demolition derby and enduro racing, and we hope to be making our final concert uh, announcement in the coming weeks. And that is it. If I'm open to questions. Julie. Thank you, Denise, and thank you for all the extra work. You were very busy on Saturday. Uh, my question to you would be, approximately, of the 52 weekends we have in a year, how many of those weekends are filled with events at the American Vent Center? I would say between 48 and 52. We're, we, we book that American one almost every weekend, whether it's a, uh, a private event or like those, the larger programs that we do. So that, that building is utilized constantly. And I do have a uh, weekly uh, commitment from the Derby Girls. And uh, they pay to rent that two days a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And now I uh, also rent out on Wednesdays during the week in that large building to a uh, dog training class. Do you have support staff that helps you with, I mean, that, that's very time consuming, all of these events. To what extent is your staff that you have on board to help you facilitate these events? Um, well, you're looking at a full-time person, but uh, I do have a uh, part-time person who's our ground superintendent, and unfortunately, we have to be very, very, very careful because of the snow this year. We've had to utilize a number of hours of his time, and he is, uh, you know, a key person to prep the grounds for fair, so there's, there's like one and a half, me and him. <laughs> My mother has helped out a couple of days. Mr. Uh, just a comment. Yesterday, uh, the Michigan Angus Association annual meeting was held at uh, Davis's, and I mentioned to several people that we had Alabama coming to the uh, uh, fair, and they were all excited and, and uh, said they would be uh, buying tickets. Uh, so I do have to email about five people the phone number and stuff, and, and uh, so they were excited about that. So things, things, uh, I think things really look uh, good for this this coming uh, season. Yeah, we sold out our VIP seats um, before the week's end after uh, we announced on Friday and by the following week the VIP seating was completely sold out. So, But we have a lot of great seats. Steve. Denise, the American One Fair Event Center, doesn't American One assist you with uh, coordinating the the rental of that facility also? No, that's... Not at all? No. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. No other questions? Thanks, Denise. Thank you. Next.
Next up is the conservation district. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Um, you should all have my report. I don't, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to touch on a lot of things that, that we've been up to. Uh, currently, right now, we're, our spring tree sale is the big thing. Our numbers are, at this point, are up a little bit from where they were last year, so hope, hopefully we keep that trend up. Um, some special events and outreach. We did a, uh, we attended, my coworker Candace is our watershed tech, we attended a township supervisors meeting uh, trying to get more of a partnership with the uh, individual townships. Some of the commissioners were there also, and uh, Representative Pileski and uh, Shirky were also there. Um, and we spoke about doing a, we have applied for a scrap tire grant, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but we got a lot of interest from the townships um, uh, in partnering with us for that. Um, also, we had a, a group of people from CertainTeed who contacted me saying that they had a group of people who wanted to volunteer and had nothing to volunteer for. So um, we're going to, I think we're going to partner with them. They're going to help us with our river cleanups and our highway cleanups and stuff. You don't often have people call looking for something to do. So that was a, that was a nice surprise. Um, we had our annual meeting in January. We had 65 people attend, which was actually pretty good considering it was really bad weather that day. Um, we are still looking for a board member. We, our election that year, or this year, had to be uh, an hour before the meeting started. Our candidate pull out, pulled out of the election. So the meeting was kind of pointless, because um, that's what the meeting is for. Um, but the board is looking for somebody to appoint at this um, right now. So we're still looking for candidates, if anybody's interested. Um, and then Kenny Price, our board chairman, was asked to speak at a women's meeting. He spoke uh, last year also. It was this uh, same lady that runs a different group of ladies, but she just loved Kenny and wanted him to come back and do another speech for um, this group of women. They just loved his southern charm. Um, some of the workshops that we did uh, this past year, we did a rain barrel workshop, a build your own rain barrel workshop out at the Dallum. We had about 20 people come. It's $45, and you, you're left with a rain barrel. Uh, and a new thing that we did this year uh, with our adoptive stream program is that uh, Candace um, took a group of Jackson College students and actually did the program with them and then had a bug ID uh, with them for that. Um, their uh, professor was really excited about the whole situation, said the kids learned a lot. Um, we also did the sprayer clinic again this year. Uh, had a, about 125, I think maybe a few more uh, this year that was out at uh, Butch Lincoln's farm um, and we had since the last time I was here we did three three river cleanups um, we did one with the Grand River Environmental Action Team uh, Hillsdale Conservation District and then we hosted our own last October um, so we cleaned a lot of river this past summer um, for our adoptive stream program we had a fall collection where we had 35 volunteers and our winter stonefly hunt which was uh, February 16th we had 19 volunteers uh, as far as our current grants, we still hold our um, Upper Grand River Bacteria Reduction Grant uh, where they're working in Rives Township um, uh, for E. coli in, the, in Elbro Creek. Uh, we still have our Hunter Access Program grant. Um, we, we did lose one farm this year that was enrolled in the program, but we gained another one. So we still have about just over 400 acres enrolled in Jackson County for that program. And our monitoring project grant just ended in December 2013. And like I mentioned before, we have applied for a scrap tire collection grant with the DEQ. And I've heard from inside sources that we have the grant, but I haven't officially heard from them yet. Um, we do have, uh, it's for 10, 000, a collection of 10,000 tires throughout the county. Uh, we're going to have five collection sites, um, one in, we're going to one in northern Jackson County, southern, eastern, western, and then one right in the city. We're going to have to put a limit of 2,000 tires per collection site, but we just want to make sure we spread it out throughout the county. Uh, we've applied for a MyCore Stream Monitoring Grant. Uh, this one's a little different than normal. It, it uh, monitors around bridges uh, and crossings 
and then another adopt a stream monitoring grant we, we do get money for our program right now the grant that we're applying for is to help us purchase um, more supplies for the project and then we did apply for another river, up cl river cleanup grant uh, the big one that we're working on right now my watershed tech is working with uh, Jackson County Parks um, for a Lime Lake project um, which involves filling a channel well, it says right here uh, a channel breach through the high quality fund located at Lime Lake it'll reestablish historic flow between area lakes and the groundwater elevations within the wetland and an unpermitted dam will be removed and the shoreline will be restored using natural materials and native vegetation and that's pretty much all Candace right now um, and Scott if you want questions they could probably answer them better than I can but they've been working on that um, pretty intensively lately and also our last grant is the our CTI grant that we've had in the past for years and years was taken away um, because the Department of Agriculture um, I, they screwed up and they thought they had money and they didn't so they went in the red so they took our program away um, they tried to keep the CTI program on uh, NRCS footed the bill for some of it um, and they've been keeping the employees on contract we're supposed to get that grant back in the conservation district hands in April so fingers crossed on that one um, some upcoming events as Denise mentioned uh, project red is coming up um, I'm the teacher contact for that and uh, she mentioned up to 1200 students will be there actually we're close to 1400 at this point um, and um, almost a thousand of them are signed up for the morning so we're gonna have to do some work to get it a little bit more evened out but that's on uh, March 25th at the fairgrounds uh, we have an adopt a highway coming up the spring tree sale coming up uh, Earth Day celebration in the park we're gonna have a booth and I'm we're on the planning committee for committee for that that's on April 26th at Cascades um, adopt a stream monitoring in May, uh, May 3rd uh, we are part of the native plant sale with the men's garden club and the master gardeners on May 17th um, we have a nitrate screening event and a rain barrel workshop which will uh, we will be presenting at the native plant sale and then just uh, our summer conference in June learning fair Jackson County Fair birds blooms and butterflies we always have a presence at those uh, events also so that's pretty much it so if anybody has any questions thank you could I ask that you get a copy of your report to Adam we don't have a copy of it in our oh I, uh, I said agenda it. here that would be good and then okay. Adam, maybe you can email it around to everybody Dave? Okay. Uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, excellent job the um, tire grant is that for tires that you find along the road or tires that you got in your in your garage they have to be passenger tires um, but we uh, it, tires that you have in your garage um, like you can't bring any tractor tires or anything like that but um, if you've got a big stockpile in your backyard we're basically trying to keep them out of the river because last year's river cleanups Clean up. we found a lot of tires and uh, so we're, okay. the other, that seems to be <coughs> dumping ground nobody cares about the river so just throw them there and nobody will see them I don't know or they just assume we're gonna go through and pick them up so <laughs> excuse me <laughs> well this is true <laughs> they're really ugly habitat but um, the other thing is the um, sprayer clinic for the uh, pesticide applicators are there was a two park uh, employees were uh, certified weren't they Scott Yes, they are. Got, went and got credits, so I saw them there. Thank you. Any other questions, Commissioners? Steve. You oversee a farm program. What was the name of that farm this year that was recognized at the annual dinner? Uh, it's the MEEP program, which is a uh, give me a minute here. It's the Michigan Agriculture and Environmental Assurance Program. Right, Dave? And we did have an outstanding farm that was uh, uh, that got MEEP certified this year uh, it was Lutch, Dave Lutchka's farm um, so kudos to you and our meat technician couldn't say enough about Dave um, and he uh, said that they were very eager um, very easy to work with and they, she said it was an absolute no-brainer picking um, Lutchka's farm for the award so Dave can you explain the importance of the bug count and finding out what bugs are in the river yes uh, basically you can tell um, 
especially in the, there are certain bugs that you find in the river that require a certain level of dissolved oxygen in the river, which, which requires uh, a clean river system. So depending on what bugs you're finding, you can kind of determine the health of your river system. Stoneflies, which we look for in the winter, uh, are a, very, a good indicator of, of high dissolved oxygen. They need clean water. They can't live in polluted water at all. So if you find stoneflies, um, you've got a healthier stream. Some streams we don't find any. And we're all, it's all the Grand River, just uh, little tributaries of the Grand River that we study. Um, and they do, basically, there's a, uh, there's a list of areas that we go to, like every few years, so we can compare the numbers. Um, to see if there's been any improvement or if it's gotten any worse in the area. But we have been finding a lot of stoneflies, so that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Front of the court quarterly report. Sarah. Denise, you have another PowerPoint going? Or? I'm sorry. Oh. To get she took care of that for me. <laughs> good morning. Um, this quarterly report falls in line with our State Court Administrator's Office annual report that we have to provide. So um, for this report, I provided you a highlight of some of the statistics that we provided to the State Court Administrator's Office. Um, without going through each one line by line, notably our collections were down by approximately 1.1 million this year. Um, that is consistent with the state collections. The state as a whole has decreased our decreased collections. A lot of that has to do with um, parties' unemployment running out, the tax benefits that we were seeing the last couple of years aren't coming through, as well as um, some IRS fraud that's going on um, for tax return recipients. So that that isn't surprising to see that that's down. Um, it's not as down as much as other counties and the state as a whole, but it is down. Uh, to counteract that, though, our open cases is down. We went through a case closure project. We closed un unenforceable cases. We closed cases with small balances, things that we were not able to devote the time to collect, um, which helps our incentives. So as you know, total number of cases versus the amount of money collected impacts our incentives from the federal government. So by decreasing our open cases, we offset some of that decreasing collections. Notably, too, we increased our support reviews um, that we completed this year by over 200. That's a, a huge amount. Um, that is still a, a big red flag in our office. We are finding that as of right now, we have just over 700 support reviews in the queue waiting to be done. So it's the beginning of the year, and we've already reached that, that large amount. So people are asking for support reviews. They are needing their support orders changed, and we're trying to, to keep up as quickly as we can. However, the volume is, is incredibly high right now. Um, the parenting time enforcement, that was another area where we increased significantly. We're trying to create a more holistic approach to the enforcement of these cases where we're devoting just as much time to the enforcement of the child support as we are to the enforcement of the parenting time. We know from studies and from experience that parents, non-custodial parents that have access to their children and we enforce the parenting time are more likely to pay their support. So we're trying to increase the number of hearings that we have for parenting time. However, those are time consuming. They take significantly more time to enforce than standard enforcement for child support. So we're finding the, the balance there is, is significant. I am very proud to report that our customer service calls and our average hold time have decreased. Um, that's part and parcel due to the, the hold time. We have fantastic staff in our customer service department and they are answering the calls and working diligently to provide accurate information. So we're finding that repeat callers, people that are giving up because they don't want to sit on hold forever, they're not having to call. So our customer service calls are coming down and our hold time has gone down as well. So that's the, the highlight for the annual report. Um, our improvement goals, uh, we are going to continue to move forward with more holistic care um, and holistic enforcement of the cases. We need to review and improve our enforcement matrix, how we find cases that we want to enforce, where we don't want to rely on the other parent calling and complaining and saying, I'm not getting my money. We want to take a more proactive approach to the enforcement of our, our cases. Um, we made some changes to our contempt hearing process where 
in 2011, we had referees hearing a good majority of the cases, and we switched back to the caseworkers hearing more of the cases, but we found that our collections were a little down as a result of that. So we're going to be reviewing that change to see if it was more effective to have the cases go before the referees instead of the caseworkers. We're also going to be looking at um, alternative enforcement opportunities. We have license suspension, vehicle booting, asset seizure, um, as well as the arrears management programs, um, payment incentive programs that are being developed through the state, and outreach with our specialty courts. We have the veterans um, specialty court that is being implemented, and we want to get in on those specialty courts to reach out to people and get them in tra on track with their child support while they're in these specialty courts. We also, um, like I mentioned before, are going to be looking at that support review process to see if there's a way we can streamline the process, get it more efficient, um, and find ways to, to solve that dilemma, because that's going to be a big issue for our office and for our clients. The HBO work environment, through the, the all-day training that we had in December, we managed to develop um, several focus groups that are 100% staff-led. The, and I listed them, there's customer service, leadership responsiveness, employee morale, workload distribution, and employee training and development. We have these teams of staff, they meet monthly, they develop ideas, we have a manager that serves as a liaison, and then they present to the management team their ideas on what they can do in these areas to help make our office go from good to great. So we're excited for those opportunities and, and those ideas that are going to come through. Any questions? Commissioner, Julie. Thank you, Sarah. You mentioned the um, phone calls that you receive. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, uh, customer service calls and how that's decreased? Can any of those questions that are, people are calling and ask you be found online? Do you have any electronic or <coughs> online services as well? And how does that balance with the customer, the actual phone call? We do have several online resources. We have our website, and then we also have My Case, which is a state website that they can access to get personalized details on their case, so they have a PIN and a login and all that, so they're able to find a lot of that information. We also have the interactive voice response system, um, so it's, I, I compare it to calling your credit card to see what your balance is or when, you know, those types of things, so they can also call the interactive voice response system as well. Um, so many of those questions can be answered that way. Um, a lot of people, though, are just not familiar with what they need to do for their case. So they need to talk to a human being, and they need their questions answered and to make sure and get reassurance that they're headed in the right direction for what they need. I guess I'm just kind of surprised that the, that the state doesn't put that requirement for you to report that as well, um, that that can because that is a critical piece uh, to be able to move to more uh, technical programs and, and to enable people to empower themselves to find that information. Sure. Um, they, they do a lot of outreach. They do mailings. They, as soon as the case is set up, they advise the clients that the, these opportunities are available for them to access. And our customer service reps are really good. If, if someone calls and it's information that they can just access online, they, they definitely let them know about it. And we've, we've had some clients where we've you know, kind of walked them through getting logged in and stuff because it, it's challenging to, to get onto those new systems. Yes, it, it is. And I guess the reason that I'm asking these questions for your department is because I'm, the DHS is becoming so much more automated and, and Absolutely. going that direction. I'm just wondering, you know, if your department will as well. Yep. Dave. Um, a comment. Uh, what I've heard out there is your department is becoming more and more um, proactive and, and, uh, than it was in the past. So good job. Thank you. Okay, Sarah, thank you. Thank you. Airport semi-annual report, Kent Mower. Thought I wore out my PowerPoint. Welcome last Friday, so I would do a PDF presentation this morning. But it's just going to center on the annual report which I believe you have in front of you, and I just wanted to highlight a few things about that. I guess the theme um, as the uh, 
board chair has pointed out is really thanking the people that support the airport operations and long-term planning. Uh, it really is a matter of relying on others. The uh, airport staff, I think, enjoyed Josh and Joe their second weekend off in the last eight weekends this past weekend. Um, the dedication of those two is remarkable. Um, I think I get there early now, usually as early as I did 10 years ago, but they're already there and um, did a remarkable job of handling a, almost a record volume of snow. And this report is put together by Pat and it, it's a labor intensive report. We've done it since I've been there and it does, um, I think, serve a good purpose of not only updating people what's happened in the last year, but it serves as writing our history. And we only write good news. So if somebody researches 15 years from now the history of the airport, it's all good news. I have had people um, who are either a private airplane owner looking for a place to locate or a business, and they go to our website and they read these things. And it does give you, I think, the flavor of the airport, or at least um, um, a snapshot of the airport. And they've said that they've used this in part of their decision-making process. Uh, we have our own special events. They don't compare to the 48 or so that the fair has, but um, there they are. The Conservation District will be out in April. Uh, the March event is, is fluid at this point. Um, it's not sure that the artist will be there to uh, help dedicate the German aircraft that's out front. The annual pancake breakfast is back on Memorial Day weekend this year. Uh, they moved it around. They tried having two. Uh, the more things change, the more they get the same. So they're back on that weekend because people could remember that. So it's a great event, um, great breakfast. Blues Fest will be back in June. And then, of course, the MIS races um, are here. And something has just happened to my PowerPoint. Um, runway and taxiway incursions, that is a big deal. That's where someone goes on to a movement area, which would be a taxiway or runway without authorization. Even our maintenance vehicles, even though we own and operate the airport, so to speak, we can't enter into a live taxiway or runway without permission. This particular article talks about a FAA vendor who um, crossed a taxiway. He looked both ways. A tower saw him going across, but uh, just because he went across the taxiway, there wasn't an airplane within a mile that was moving of that particular point. But it is an FAA report and a tremendous amount of um, explaining to do. Carl Boylan uh, just retired from Consumers Energy, uh, 28,000 flight hours in a helicopter. He started in Vietnam in the late 60s. Um, if things work out, he'll still be there flying uh, for another energy company other than Consumers, Consumers is now contracting out all of their line patrol, pipeline patrol, and uh, power line patrol. We have a listing of our um, different services that are available. These are only the aviation services. There are many other uh, businesses there at the airport. But these are the aviation-related ones. Uh, airport board meeting schedule in March uh, in the outreach effort. The airport board will be meeting at 6 p.m., uh, we had a concern raised by one of the uh, pilots and hangar owners that he could never come to the airport board meeting. So uh, twice a year, the airport board meets at 6 p.m., so that's coming up in March. And um, an article about the aircraft. And I need to give a mention, I know Amy just left, but Amy leads the Airport Advisory Council, and that is one of the most pleasant groups outside of the airport board that I've ever had the occasion to work with. Um, it's not just pilots, there are pilots there, but Amy brings a whole new perspective to that. And they've done things like develop a marketing plan for the airport. Um, we had an inquiry about the lease rates, uh, why they went up every year by the cost of living uh, calculators that the federal government provides. And so we did a research uh, on that and reported back to the airport board. It's a tremendous resource and they do really good work in it. And it's a good sounding board and a good filter for me and for the airport board. And then we have the Aviator Monument. I know some of you were able to come to that. That was actually a very special moment. Uh, I'm sorry I did not get videotaped. I thought uh, one of the local uh, news services was going to be there to tape it and did not get done. And that is my bad. I should have um, taped that. It was a pretty special event, particularly the photo there with the missing man uh, formation of the aircraft T-6s. Uh, during taps 
And if you weren't affected by that, there's, uh, I'd be surprised that was pretty powerful. Is that is that yours? Thank you, Adam. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good shot there. And then lastly, um, Bob Lezebnik, who I think most of you know, um, donated a oversized bronze statue to us a few years ago. It's on display in the Aviation Heritage Park, and he also donated the German aircraft, uh, the German Fokker, that's in front of the terminal. And his intent is to make. Jackson more of an art destination, in particular to make the airport more of a destination to support businesses. And the Aviation Heritage Park, now the problem we have um, is it's full. It has a number of displays there. Um, when I do tours for kids, um, that is the focus of the tour, um, going between the air traffic control tower and the EAA hangar. And uh, Bob never wants any accolades. And he was about 49% angry that he got duped into being at this airport board meeting without knowing the purpose. And his wife was a co-conspirator, so I didn't feel all that bad. But he said if he'd known he was going to receive this award, he would not have showed up. But uh, I think deep down inside, he was very appreciative. And annually, the airport board recognizes a group or a individual or a business that has gone above and beyond the call of duty in supporting the airport board. Um, and lastly, the snow removal equipment building is 99.9% .9 done, still working on a couple of things. That was a great learning experience for me, but if I never am involved in building another commercial building, that will be fine also. Uh, that was a tremendous amount of work. And then a um, lot of photos in the report. Nobody really wants to read um, dry annual reports, so we try to make it in the form of a newsletter and make it alive and do little blurbs. It's on our website. I would encourage you to send the link to people that you think might be interested in learning more about the airport. That's all I have. Thank you, Kent. Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Jackson County Youth Center quarterly report. Good morning, everybody. I um, wanted to just talk to you a little bit about uh, some of our, our data, um, kind of the same thing of what we talk about most of the quarters. Um, we have 22 residents right now in detention. Uh, three of those residents are, are being waived to the adult court. Um, nine residents in our residential program. Um, one is on homebound where he goes um, home during the, the week and comes to us on the weekend. Um, and that's toward the end of his, his treatment with us. And then uh, we had a graduation this last Friday of a resident. So um, we're really excited about that. Um, if you remember back in December, our average daily population was um, quite high. It was 24.2. Uh, our maximum capacity on detention is 24. So we, for uh, 2013, we had a lot of um, uh, full beds. However, right now our, our average is 19.8, so we've uh, had a, a little lower than where, um, where we were last year. Our average length of stay, and that's not a typo, it's 19.8 uh, uh, days as well, so it's just kind of coincidental where we had the, our average population as well as then our um, detention days. So far uh, this year we've had 70 admissions 53 males and 17 females. Uh, back in January, I presented to the LifeWays board um, to let them know of the, of the many things that we have going out and what we do. Um, we are also uh, collaborating with Integro, where they will have uh, a therapist out at our site 20 hours a week and providing um, various services for our residents, but really becoming ingrained into the culture of what we are doing there so that they can see um, uh, help us understand some of the things that we are as we're working with some of the residents and if we're and and as we can be collaborative working together and um, giving the services uh, to the residents and then further one reason why we're working with uh, Integro so that they can then um, continue on with those services once they leave our facility and have a local uh, contact as well. I am really, really, really excited to talk to you about the Youth Arts Alliance. We have collaborated with a, an organization out of Washtenaw. Um, they started 
January of 2013 and have been in four other um, juvenile facilities this last year. We're now the fifth facility that have come on, on board with them. And um, this last Wednesday, I actually went over and um, was at the Washtenaw uh, Board of Commissioners meeting where uh, the Youth Arts Alliance uh, requested uh, permission to accept a grant, a $25,000 grant that they were able to receive um, to help offset some of the costs and bring in some additional services for the residents and um, wanted as many of the um, collaborative group there. So we we're, uh, were happy to be able to be there for that. Um, the f I pr uh, gave you a, um, the brochure of what the Youth Arts Alliance um, um, is, but I think this is, this kind of gives you a better feel for the impact that is happening on, on the residents. Some of the things um, anecdotal that we're looking at um, from last year and wanting to try to put more hard evidence on going forward is that in the facilities, okay, in the facilities where um, Youth Arts Alliance has had, uh, has been, they have seen some uh, decrease in physical aggression out of the residents, a decrease in needing to um, um, have physical restraints. And so again, that's um, more qualitative. And so we're wanting to try to be quantitative this next year as we are a new facility coming on using pre-data uh, that we have to then see what the, uh, the benefit is. What they're really seeing is um, the ability for the re residents, uh, their teens, they don't always know how to communicate what they have going on. And the youth arts where they're able to work on um, some of the, uh, the poetry, although I was quickly informed that teenage boys don't write poetry. They write raps. And so I'm going to read to you a rap here um, of one of our residents. It's uh, Ya Time. Youth Arts Alliance, YAA. Chilling in ya, it's probably the best part of the day. So I just gotta say I'm happy I made it to this day. We sit and snap, we don't never clap. They let us rhyme and rap, and if you think it good, then you snap. Shout out to Heather, Margarita, and Brecken. The three of them together makes this program better. At 6.30, I know it's time to rock. By the time it hits eight o'clock, I don't wanna stop. I wish I could rewind time so we can do it again, but until next week, I'll see you later, my friend. But one last thing, shout out to Yah, they helped me make it through the day. So again, it's just an opportunity for them to try to express some of their, their, their feelings. Um, there's theater part of this, uh, this grant that we're having um, starting next Sunday. We have a group out of Toledo that's coming in and they're going to be working on um, uh, it's, it's a recording studio and after 12 hours I, um, the plan is for them to be able to have a recorded uh, bit um, of music for, for the residents to have been able to express uh, a mosaic and a um, mural we're going to be looking at throughout this summer to be um, creating as well. I have some art if you don't mind can I show you submit to you guys to uh, look at. Motion to receive. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Thank you. This resident um, has drawn, but up until two weeks ago, had never done any painting. And um, by the the work of the the facilita facilitators, um, just really helped her capture understanding different colors, understanding how uh, color. Um, this is outside of my realm, but color palettes maybe um, work together is what they were telling me. So just, um, it's, it's an opportunity for her to just, again, express herself with a way that she doesn't necessarily know how. And then here's one of her others.
again, just um, we're really, really excited uh, in hearing the the um, the reports from other other facilities and other residents. There's also every two weeks. Um, it's called the Beat Within. It's a national. It's a actually global newsletter that um, gets uh, submitted and published. Published where our residents have an opportunity um, to submit some of their works as well. Uh, they all create an alias so that we can maintain the confidentiality of our residents. So, some good things happening here. Any questions? So you mentioned the $25,000 grant that Washtenaw County received. So we're benefiting from the grant that they received or we're going to be applying or we have applied for our own within our county? We are benefiting from that grant. It was a collaborative uh, grant for all five counties. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Sheriff, bids for 911 center components. Morning. You want to start with the with the bids, or do you want to start with the GPS? Yeah, this okay. Is the bid. uh, <clears throat> you have in front of you all of the bids that have been returned. We sent them per county policy out to RFP. They were opened uh, by the clerk at a sealed bid opening mm -hmm. the last few weeks, um, separate sealed bid openings. Um, you have in front of you the bid for the console system, radio system from ROCOM. Um, there were some questions leading up. I met with the uh, administrator and deputy administrator about whether these bids met the MyDeal uh, <coughs> discount, and it actually exceeds it by about $53,000. The relationship we have with ROCOM, uh, they discounted the, the product significantly. So we are getting a, a I guess, pretty decent price on this, on this uh, system. It's recommended that we go with them. They're the vendor that is for the most part, straighten a lot of the problems we've had out in the county with the radio system, and uh, we're confident they can do the job. We also have the bid for flooring and the bid for the, and that was the only bid, by the way, for the flooring that came back, and we have a bid for the, the furniture, the dispatch furniture, which is, as you may know, is specific to dispatching. We're going to have ergonomic stations that they can stand or sit at and adjustable height and so forth, and we'll accommodate all the necessary equipment for a dispatch uh, center. There was two bids for that, and this was low bid, but it's also the preferred product that uh, uh, some of our employees and uh, supervisors have reviewed. So I guess I would ask that the that you approve these projects. Okay, we're looking to send uh, all three onto the full board, which would be the radio portion, the furniture portion, and the flooring portion, unless somebody sees a need to separate it. I think it can all go to the board at once. I would make the motion to send all three to the full board. The board questions or additional comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Sheriff. Next, next item is uh, GPS solution for all law enforcement vehicles in Jackson County. That includes township, villages, city, um, state police is on board. We would not be buying the product for uh, the state police, but they have agreed to, to sign on to it if, you know, as long as, and I think they may even have some equipment that already is in place that works to uh, fulfill the GPS uh, uh, system obligations we had really there's two components to the system there is the hardware that would need to be purchased for all the vehicles uh, to enable the GPS tracking and then there's the the uh, component the new world component which would interface the GPS signal into the new world system so that dispatch personnel could see actually real time cars movement, movement uh, locate vehicles that would be an officer safety uh, benefit. And also, uh, after sp speaking with the vendor last week, they're, they're saying that we can also begin to assign uh, vehicles, like multiple vehicles, depending on the, the type of incident it is. So we, we could predetermine specific incidents and assign, say, five vehicles to uh, uh, if it was, I'll just use an active, active shooter type scenario, and they would immediately be, be dispatched. We currently go through a process of dispatching, which we call the bid system, 
uh, in any, any given call in Jackson County, there could be four different agencies that could be assigned to many of the areas that we work. So we have what is probably a, a archaic and redundant bid system where we, we pull the units, ask them their status and location, have them respond back, and then assign the appropriate agency based on location. Uh, we're hoping that this system will get us away from this uh, bid system once and for all. Uh, we tried this pro a similar product uh, that did not interface well with, with uh, the dispatch CAD system back in 99. We had that in operation for about five or six years, and some, some may recall, I know Chief Elwell may recall, it, it just it never functioned like it was advertised, and GPS has come a long way in, in the last several years, and I'm hoping that this will, will get us away from that bid system. It'll increase uh, or decrease uh, response time as well significantly. Sheriff, I think you answered one of my questions. I had a concern when I read in the document that the state police uh, were not going to be part of the project uh, because if they don't have the GPS, it makes it hard to assign the closest car if you don't see them. But you're confident that they're going to participate with their own equipment or something? We, we have an email assurance that they would do what they could to sign on to this product, yes. Okay. Yes. And then I just heard you say something about being able to assign types of calls that it's not going to change the closest car concept for bidding, correct? Absolutely not. It would not change that. Uh, I, I think our goal here is, is, is to, to try to do a better job of assigning and, and making less determinations by dispatchers, opening the opportunity for error and, and having an automatic assignment of two units to, say, a domestic assault or any kind of an in-progress in call and the school shooting type incidents, if, if God forbid that were to happen. Um, so assign minimum, minimally five units. Okay, and then I'm curious, some agencies have purchased, I, I think one of the systems you mentioned was TrackStar, to be able to track their patrol cars. Does this do the same type feature and does it store historical data? And if so, would that data then be available to, for instance, the chiefs from the agencies to I go back and look at? I believe it would. I know there's what, I, I call it cracker trail type, where it shows where you it, it can even, there, there's the potential it could even help uh, officers navigate. So if you aren't from a jurisdiction, uh, you might be able to you might be able to go across county and, and know your location by viewing what is seen on same on the CAD screen. So there's a lot of potential there for. Okay, and if that historical that. tracking is there as a feature of it, that'll be available to the individual agencies to to view. Absolutely, okay. there there will be permissions set though too. We we want to make sure that that there's. You know, you could view your agencies, right. I could view mine, yes. Right, okay. Yes. And then lastly, I don't know that you have the answer for this, maybe Adam or Mike, but do we know what the balance is in the wireless fund, and are there any planned future expenditures anticipated to come from it? And I don't expect that you'd know the balance. Well, and, yeah, it is, it's 1.1 million right now, uh, assuming the project is probably going to run in total around $900,000 for everything that we've, and keep in mind, this was something on the, kind of the back burner for this project. This is, I didn't mean to surprise anyone by it, but we had to make sure that all the other bids came in where they needed to before we could even entertain a project like this because this is a, it's, it's, it's a very beneficial product, but it's also not completely necessary, but I think it'll work for us in the long run and help us out. Thank you for all those answers. Other commissioners, any questions on this proposal? Steve. How tied into this are we? Are we five years contract, three year contract? Oh uh, boy, where's New World? Where are we at with New World now? And I brought these guys in case there's any technical school questions you guys might have. We are with New World in my recollection to at least uh, 2016. Uh, the problem that we have is that it's a multiple component system, um, functions across all spectrums, corrections, dispatch. Uh, law enforcement records. Uh, so to change would be to change everything. And as you recall, when we went to New World back in early 2000s, it was uh, several million um, for the conversion and the product. Uh, frankly, it functions very well across all the spectrums at this point. We don't have any complaints. Everything functions very well. As I uh, kind of alluded to in the document, that uh, one of the biggest features uh, for New World is that it can track data or call occurrence from the inception of the 911, 911 call all the way through an offender's arrest. So it, it follows the trail all the way through. There's lots of companies that offer different components. These offer correctional setting information. These people offer di dispatch information, but nobody offers a robust uh, functioning system across all the spectrums. I, 
with that being said, the Board of Commissioners with the 911 Center were, were thinking ahead that there might be opportunities for shared services with other counties. How many of our neighbors operate under New World right now, and how hard would it be to convert them if we went with you know, a shared services environment with another another jurisdiction. Well, for, this doesn't extend the contract with New World. This is just an add-on, and uh, as you may know, Lenaway has New World systems. Um, I don't believe that Washington <coughs> does, and then the, the counties north of us have their own kind of uh, arrangement going on. So uh, it's I don't. It's spattered all over the state of Michigan. New World and OSSI are the two big products out there that have the multifunction feature so um, I don't know if that answered your question exactly okay Commissioner Duckham uh, Sheriff if a car is dispatched to a certain address does this also pull up past history of calls so you know we can do that now that's that's already a feature that's available any address within a certain range is uh, is highlighted for instance even if I went to your neighbor's house and there was a house watch you know that said the Duckham residence is is you know they're on vacation or something it would alert us so that we would know um, on the house watch that, that any anyone in that in whatever the parameter that's set we would, we would be aware of it. How about past history from a certain residence if, if it's a frequent frequent number call not in? necessarily not necessarily but uh, some of our, our more experienced seasoned dispatchers uh, usually make officers aware of that um, that's another reason why it's great to have some of the local jurisdictions out there because they always know because they've been there thank you yeah. any other questions or comments that we're looking for a motion to send this on motion and support all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Motion carried. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Administrator controller, the, I didn't realize that was a word, rescension or the rescinding of the county flow control ordinance. Thank you. I think everyone is aware, has been aware for some time, that <coughs> the resource recovery facility is closed, no longer uh, turning waste into energy um, been a year long hard fight if you will this will pre you know this will frankly um, bring it all to an end real soon this is the request to uh, rescind the ordinance number six the flow control ordinance this basically means that trash haulers after April 12th starting on the 13th would be able to take trash uh, anywhere that the solid waste master plan allows and you can see a list of the counties in that we need to obviously approve that this month so that we can give notice official notice to all the haulers that sort of thing so they can make uh, other arrangements uh, I believe uh, it was discussed on Friday I suspect uh, uh, some may still have a question or two be happy to entertain those commissioners questions or comments on it hearing none we're looking for a motion to send on to the full board rescinding the flow control ordinance support motion and support all those in favor signify by saying aye aye those opposed the same motion carried simple enough uh, claims uh, make a motion to pay the bills motion and support all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Motion carried. We have the other minutes, uh, April reporting schedule, and we're back down to public comment. Three minutes of public comment. Hello, public. Please step up and give us your name, and you have three minutes. Morning. My name is Brad Runkle, and I'm the introducing myself as the applicant for the Brownfield Redevelopment Board. Um, became aware of the position with from Natalie Stopiak, my colleague at Consumers Energy. I have eight, eight years of um, work experience in the environmental field, I'm a licensed professional engineer, and um, we've been working on environmental projects, um, environmental due diligence projects uh, for most of my career. So I just want to introduce myself and say thank you for the opportunity. Thanks, Brad. Any other public comment? 
Hearing none. Committee member comments. Chairman Chatwell. I, Delaney will be returning this week, and I'm hoping that, that the office will return to the sense of normalcy that, the, that everyone has. And I think Sandy and Sue have done a stellar job stepping up and taking care of all of us the way they have. I know we're going to miss Sandy's smiling face and her ability to get things taken care of with the commissioners, and Sue's also. But could we ask that Delane put out the assignments, what, what's needed for those two openings, the FEMA and the uh, uh, works? upon review to see ex exactly what's needed of the commissioner. Thank you. Any other comments? We're adjourned.